Well, everyone, it's official. I've hit a new stage in life where I am sending kids off to college. So today I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about what is the best vehicle or mode of transportation to send my kids off to college with. I've lived in a college town for about 10 years. I've watched all the trends and I myself have been commuting to work on this big fat bike most days of the year. And I absolutely love it. And having a bike is great, but guess what? You have to have a garage to put it in. And as I watch around campus and I see what everybody else is doing with their bikes and how they get beat up, I can tell you that it's not a great solution. At least it's not a great solution for everybody. Most college dorms and, and even apartments have probably a big bike rack outside and don't allow any bikes on the inside. You can check with wherever you're sending your kids. That can vary, but between theft and weather, let me show you what happens. This little bike just came out of an apartment complex where it had been sitting for at least the last couple months. And if you look here closely, <laughs> this chain is so rusted, it doesn't move even a little bit. I mean, it is completely destroyed. And that's what happens. The weather just eats these bikes up. You can see rust coming out of the pedals, coming out of the cranks, the frame, the derailleur, the shifters, everything. If this bike were a car, I would say it's just about totaled. This poor old truck is probably 20 to 25 years old. And for me to bring it back to life would cost me probably no less than about $100, $150. It's just not a great solution. What's even worse, I cringe a little bit to think about some kids taking nicer bikes like my fat bike and storing it outside at an apartment complex all winter and summer where it just sits in, in all of the elements and just rusts and deteriorates day after day. I wanna to talk to you about a growing option that I'm seeing all over campus that I think is a really good solution for a lot of kids going off to college. E-scooters just like this are popping up all over campus and it's easy to see why. They fold up and they store very easily. They can go just about anywhere in town. They can go on sidewalks, they can go on campus and they fold up so nicely that you can carry them into a building, you can carry them into your dorm room, you can put them in a closet. They're really practical for both men and women and I think it's a pretty good solution. And perhaps best of all, I have seen these scooters from anywhere between 200 to $1,000. So there are lots of options to fit just about every budget. Let's talk about some of the different features you see in a lot of these scooters. Some of them have the batteries down here in the deck, and some of them have the batteries up here. Also, most of these scooters fold up really easily. So you pop it up, <clears throat> click it in, and they're about ready to go. It's pretty fun to see how fast these things can be unfolded, power on, and you just jump up and you're riding within just a few seconds. Now, some variations you're gonna find in some scooters. There are a lot of different types of wheels that come on these electric scooters. Some are rigid and some actually have inner tubes in them. The inner tubes typically provide a little bit softer, more smooth of a ride versus the others have almost zero maintenance. It is possible with some of these inflatable tires to pop a tire and we've learned personally in our house over the last several months that changing an inner tube on a scooter like this can be a little bit more expensive. Our local bike shop charged us $40 to change the last inner tube that we popped. But as long as you're not taking it off of jumps and curbs and all sorts of other things, these inner tubes are going to last a long time. They're not that prone to being popped unless you're riding it really hard. Okay, so let's say I ride this to work or to my class. I simply pop off, throw the kickstand wherever I want to, and fold it down. Within a couple of seconds, I fold it up and I am ready to walk to class. And I see a lot of kids actually carrying these right into their classes or somewhere secure inside a building. So it's not left outside. They're not as prone to being stolen. Um, a lot of them come with apps and other things that have to be paired to a phone. So they can be actually quite secure. And when you look at the footprint that this scooter takes up, you can see that it is actually quite small. It fits in so many places it can easily be taken inside a building, inside an apartment, inside a dorm room, and protect it from the elements. Now, I wouldn't want to send my kids out into a college town without having some good visibility. And so there is a nice light on these. When picking your own scooter, I would look for a light that's a nice LED light that's built in that can easily be turned on and off and can provide your, your son or daughter the visibility in the front as well as in the rear. Now, another feature I look for as far as security and safety goes are disc brakes. And all you need to do is look to see if you've got a nice disc here 
with a brake caliper on it. Those disc brakes carry a lot of stopping power for a vehicle or a small little device like this. Also, since these scooters really travel on the sidewalk a lot, it is also important to find something that has a nice bell like that so that you can make yourself known and make sure that there's pedestrian traffic around you knows where you're at. Another reason I think a scooter is a good option for a lot of students is that the range on these is typically about 10 to 15, maybe even 25 miles, depending on how many hills and what kind of speed and the weight of the rider. So your mileage might vary, but for most college towns, that's more than enough to get to and from classes or to and from a job. And best yet, especially depending on some climates, you won't arrive sweaty. And it can be ridden in just about any kind of attire. Whether your daughter's going to class in a skirt or your son's going to some kind of formal dance in a tux. <laughs> this actually works pretty well. Is a scooter a great mode of transportation for a date? Maybe if you each had one. Let me give you one more reason why this is really an important discussion. In our little college town, any new apartment complex that is built is only required to have two parking spots for every six beds and they will oversell and we end up with a lot of students getting parking tickets. One thing is for sure, if you send a student to a university campus with something like this, they're gonna save money on gas and they won't have to have the hassle of messing with parking permits and parking tickets. Now there are some cases where I would absolutely not recommend this be your main mode of transportation in a college town. Number one, if your job is somewhere way outside of the college town, you're not gonna commute more than about five miles comfortably each way on something like this. I think for me, about five miles might be my max. Even going about 18 to 20 miles an hour, five miles or more is still gonna take me 20 plus minutes to get there. If you really want a vehicle that will take roommates and friends and dates out for a good time, a scooter is not going to cut it. This is really a one person vehicle. It might be a good addition to a car so I can keep the car parked and not spend the money on the gas. The electricity that something like a little e-scooter takes, it costs pennies a month. We've been using the Turbo Ant around the house for a few weeks. In fact, the kids have now made this their permanent commuting vehicle. They like to take it to sports practices, down to the corner store to go get some snacks. Uh, hang out with their friends, cruise around the neighborhood with their friends, run to the park and back. It's a pretty great device for moving around town and getting yourself to and from jobs and all sorts of other things. Now, just a few other little important details for you. This Turbo Ant i7 Max comes with a 350 watt motor. The motor sits here in the front wheel. Like I said, it's got the disc brakes. It comes with a really nice wide platform. The brake light blinks when the brake is engaged. And it even comes with this external removable battery uh, should the battery ever need to be replaced. It's super simple to operate. It has throttle here and brake here, your bell. There's lots of new electric vehicles all over the market today. You don't have to go with the scooter. I just think the scooter is a really good contender for a student vehicle, especially for a student in a small college town. That being said, when I'm working all over my campus, I am seeing everything from one wheels to electric skateboards and even those new <laughs> center wheel thingamajigs, the little hoverboards and, and all sorts of odds and ends that I've never seen before. And hopefully I'll get a chance to test some of those. Knowing what I know with all the testing that I've done, I would say this is a really good option for most college students. It's not gonna get them more than a few miles back and forth. It's definitely not a vehicle I would tell my son to go pick up his date in. But when it comes to daily driver, getting to and from jobs and, and classes, this thing gets the job done for most small tasks. Well, everybody, those are my opinions on whether or not I would get my kids going off to college a scooter or not. They really only perform that one function, but they perform it quite well and get the student right to their dorm room. They stay out of the weather. I cringe when I pass all of the apartment complexes every day with piles and piles of bikes sitting out there in the weather and just being torn apart by the elements. I need to let you know that Turbo Ant is running a Black Friday special $170 off the Turbo Ant i7. That brings this little scooter down to about $300, $350. It's a really good scooter 
for the money. Whether you buy this one or another, it doesn't matter. I think it's a good discussion to have with your future college students about what is the best, most frugal decision, most frugal vehicle they can possibly take to college. Thanks for coming along with me today. Leave me any comments, leave me a thumbs up, and we'll see you guys next time. Mileage test, start the watch, let's go. Full battery, full throttle. Is that whenever I go up hills, like even like really steep hills, it still maintains like 16, 17 miles an hour. Like it doesn't slow down very much. So we're at 15.2 miles and yeah, the battery, the battery died. Is dead, but I can still go down this hill, no throttle.